welcome to another video. Um, I wanted to make this video because as we get into spring and summer, I know a lot of people have either made travel plans already or are currently planning. Um, and you may be looking at a possible layover in Japan. Now you may think like, oh, you can't do much with a layover, but actually if you plan accordingly, you can get a lot out of a layover. I just got back from a trip to Indonesia and on our way back, we had a 12 hour layover in Japan. And um, so I definitely went through this process of planning and learned a lot. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, I think this video will be super helpful for people who maybe you don't travel often or you've never been to Japan. Um, but even if you do travel a lot, I think planning a layover is very different from planning um, a normal trip. There's a lot of things to consider. So yeah, I hope you find this video helpful. All right, so the first thing you need to consider is do you even have enough time to get out of the airport? So Tokyo has two main airports, Narita and Haneda. Narita is about an hour 15 to an hour and a half away from Tokyo, whereas Haneda is only about 30 minutes. So as you can imagine, the difference between those two is pretty large and you need to make sure your layover is even long enough for you to get out. Um, and actually do things in the city. So if you can imagine if you're in Narita, you know, an hour and a half to get in and an hour and a half just to come back, that's three hours in itself, plus getting out of immigration, plus coming back in to get through security. I mean, you probably need a solid eight, nine hour layover to really make it worth it. Haneda, you have a lot more flexibility. I've made a five hour layover at Haneda work before. So um, definitely take that into account and obviously also like just your own comfort in traveling and being familiar with security and things like that are important. And this kind of flows into my second tip, which is to make sure you are familiar with the immigration um, rules for the country. So for Japan, we needed to have um, we need to have our COVID uh, vaccine cards um, to be able to get out. And that was actually one of the reasons why getting out took forever. For us, just to get out of the airport, it took two hours. So that really cut into our layover. Um, but, you know, for some people, do you need an on-arrival visa? Do you need um, other different immigration papers? You need to make sure to have those. Otherwise, if you're excited about your layover, you get there, you can't get out of the airport. And that really sucks. All right, so the next tip is think about the hours you're there. What is even open? If your layover is overnight, like from you know 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., unfortunately, there isn't going to be anything open and there really isn't going to be much that you can do. Um, but in our case, we were there from about 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. So that was a great time. It was perfect for us to get in and get out. Um, and we actually managed to miss all the rush hour traffic. So we didn't have to squeeze with people on the trains. Um, and we were able to like get lunch and go shopping. And so that worked out really well. However, um, we were there on a Monday and I really wanted to go to Closet Child and Closet Child was not open on Mondays. So make sure that you're kind of taking a look at that, what is open on what days and really taking that account into account when you're planning. All right, so the next tip is super important, which is check the weather. The weather in Tokyo may be very different from your original destination. Um, in our case, we were in Indonesia where it's very hot. And when we got to Tokyo, it was probably in like the 50s, 60s. So not terribly cold, but definitely not shorts and t-shirt weather. Um, so I had to make sure to plan accordingly. I wore like long pants on the plane and then a long shirt as well. Um, and also brought a little cardigan to put over myself. And it was pouring rain, which I checked beforehand. So I made sure I had an umbrella. Um, so as you can imagine, if it was pouring rain and you didn't have an umbrella or a raincoat, that would really dampen the day. All right, so another really important thing to consider, especially if you wanna go shopping, is luggage space. Now, 
As you can imagine, you don't have the luxury of two giant check-in luggages when you're at a layover. So you have to be really strategic about what you're bringing as your carry-on. And so what I did was I had an empty carry-on luggage and a personal item. And then when I actually got to Tokyo, I put that um, carry-on luggage in a locker and I was going around Tokyo with just my personal item, which was a backpack. It made it really easy and I could do all my shopping um, really easily. And then when we got back to the airport, I put all my shopping items into that empty carry-on. Um, and that just made it really easy. There is some pre-planning. Make sure to look up where the lockers are. Make sure to look up um, what, which terminal your flight is leaving out of. And so you put your luggage at the correct terminal to make your life a lot easier. I'll leave a link below of um, Narita has a website that actually has that information, which is super helpful. And it's also really cheap. I think for a large locker, it was $6 for like a whole day. So really affordable and just makes the whole experience so much easier. All right, and my final tip is really on planning as to when you are in Tokyo. Um, I highly recommend staying close to the stations, especially on, I think it's the JR line. It's like the loop, the green loop, um, because that connects almost directly to um, the, what is it, Narita Express, or like the two different ways you can get back to the airport. Makes it really easy, saves you a lot of time. Um, how I kind of sectioned out my trip was I budgeted roughly three hours at two stops. So keep in mind, my layover was 12 hours and with all the back and forth and also, you know, you have to take into account getting lost, um, I budgeted only about six hours total actually in Tokyo to do things. So um, I chose uh, Shibuya's, no, Shinjuku station and Harajuku because my main goal was to go shopping. And where else is better to do a one-stop shop than Harajuku? So we actually ended up, because immigration took so long, I cut out Shinjuku and we just did Harajuku. Um, and we were able to go around, it was very easy, it wasn't stressful, and we were able to just hop onto the train and go straight back to Narita really easily. All right, so those are all the tips I have for you on planning a layover in Japan. If you have um, recently planned a layover in Japan and you have any learnings, I would love to hear them. Also, if you have any questions, um, maybe you actually do have a layover coming up soon, um, I would be happy to answer those as well. So go ahead and drop any of those as comments down below. Um, thank you so much for watching and wishing all of you safe travels. Bye. Thank you.